Hey folks, I need to bottle up some wine today and I had some interest from Yankee 4, shout out to Yankee 4, uh, about the airlocks and the balloons so I decided to make a combination video. Now this looks like some mad scientist experiment here but what this is is making simple wine at home. Uh, I've got these two bottles on the end that I made back in January. Uh, I don't have to wait so long to bottle them up. I'm just finally getting around to it today. Uh, then I've got a bottle of watermelon, two bottles of peach, and a bottle of white grape. I posted a video of, with the blackberry wine that I was making and the airlocks that I had on them. Uh, Yankee 4 was asking about that. Now I'm out of airlocks. Uh, some of the other ones that I had got broken or misplaced or whatever. And so I've reverted back to my old way of using balloons. The purpose of using the balloons is it keeps critters out of your wine. It also lets you see how the wine is progressing. I just put this wine in uh, a couple of days ago and I've already had to let the air out of the balloons a couple of times. What this is, is just a byproduct, uh, carbon dioxide I believe, of the yeast turning the sugar into alcohol uh, produces carbon dioxide. You never want to put a cap on one of these bottles while you're making wine or else you will have an explosion. Uh, been there, done that. I had thought that it was done fermenting. I capped it off, put the cap on tightly, put it in my laundry room. A few days later it sounded like a 30-06 going off and I'm still finding big hunks of glass under the washer and the dryer. There was glass embedded in the sheet rock kind of dangerous so make sure that your wine is completely your yeast is completely dead prior to um, capping it off now like I said on this when the balloon gets full I just go ahead and drain some of the gas off I'll just grab the edge and give it a tug and let that balloon go back down wine making at home is really easy all you need is a container, fruit, water, sugar, and what I recommend is buying a package of uh, distiller's yeast, which works really, really well. Now, the white wine is, the white grape is going slow, but I'm pretty happy with the progress of it. Uh, might have just had a, a lower sugar content, I don't know, but I'm not real happy with the progress of the watermelon. So what I'm going to do with the watermelon today is drop a yeast bomb on it. What the yeast bomb is, is I've just taken a cup of water, a half a cup of sugar, boiled it up so that, that the uh, sugar will not recrystallize mix it into syrup, added a tablespoon of that distiller's yeast and just let it get to about 80, 90 degrees and let the yeast get working. Here is the yeast bomb. Now, I added the yeast when the water was at about um, 93 degrees and nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then as I watch the temperature go down, when I hit 90.5 degrees, you started to see the yeast get active. Yeast is happiest between about 80 and 90 degrees. So that's getting rolling pretty good now. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the balloon off my watermelon Just take a turkey baster, fill it up, insert it down into the mix, and just drop that yeast bomb right in the middle of that. And that should get it active again. Now I've got eight gallons in progress uh, right now. That's a total of 40 bottles of wine that I've got underway, uh, which that's going to be a good supply of wine.
After I get the yeast bomb in there, I'm just going to reseal it with the balloon and hopefully it'll pick up and do a lot better in the fermenting process. We'll see probably by the end of the day. Okay, I've got uh, two gallons of wine ready to go that I made back in January. Uh, this one, which has turned out very clear, is, is a cider. Now this one is sort of a cider flavored mead. Uh, I ran out of apples, so I had to revert back to honey. Mead is honey wine. Um, you'll see that this one is cloudy. When Both of them were cloudy, and when a couple of days back, I put them both in the refrigerator. A lot of times that will draw the cloudiness out of them. It did in this one, it didn't in this one. Some wines uh, wind up being cloudy. You won't be able to get that clear. Uh, what I've got here is a racking cane. This is a cheap racking cane. Uh, cost me about 10 bucks. Really, it's all I need. I've just got some old wine bottles and I reuse the artificial corks, the fake corks. Now, what I do beforehand, there is no need that I've found to keep it completely sterile, but I do steam these upside down and throw the corks in there and steam them all, give them a good steaming before before I use them. If you're, you're getting started and you can't afford the racking cane or you don't have a racking cane, uh, you can pour this off through some cheesecloth. This sediment is nothing to be worried about. I know it looks ugly as heck, but what it is is dead yeast, particles of fruit, and, and all that, and that's all it is. So, no reason to worry about it. Okay, I've about got the last bottle full. I've got a base model uh, Andy Corker, oddly enough made by Ferrari. And basically what it is, is just a plunger type cork. If you open it up, place your cork in there, put the bottle probably down be between your feet is the best thing, and then slowly lean your body weight and it forces the cork through a small hole in the bottom and down into the neck of the bottle. The last step on this, just because I've reused my corks, is I'm gonna drip a little candle wax on top of the cork, sealing it up. The reason for the candle wax is that that cork has already been pierced by a corkscrew and therefore does have a hole running all the way through it. Adding the wax will just give it a nice seal and that way it's ready for long-term storage. As you can see, the bottles of cider on this side are nice and clear. The apple mead on that side are a little bit cloudy. It's no problem. It's not like you get grit between your teeth when you drink it. It's just that that's, uh, that failed to clear up totally. Making wine at home is very easy. Uh, everyone should try it. You don't need a lot of expensive equipment. I enjoy it. It's, my wine isn't great, but it's getting better with time. Uh, I'm learning new techniques all the time. I take, I'm taking a free class right now at the farmer's market, and any little bit improves it. And eventually, I'll hope to uh, be making wine this year out of my uh, muscadine grapes and that's why I'm learning so much now so that I can produce good wine from my muscadine grapes. Anyway, stay safe.